So welcome. I am going to do this. Welcome to our holiday selling workshop. Okay. How exciting. This is our like, I don't know, all the holiday things. And you guys, when I was making this, I was like, holy cow, how did I ever train on all of the holiday things in one thing? There's so much that you can do in October through mid-November that this I'm excited about today. The other thing I'm excited about is you're going to learn a lot of ideas to sell a lot, but to keep it really, really simple. Um, I feel like last year I had this awakening where I was like, this is way too complicated. We've made our lives harder. We don't need to make our lives harder. So <laughs> I hope you enjoy the ideas tonight. Um, what I would recommend if you are a new consultant or a seasoned consultant, because we go through so much stuff, you don't have to implement everything. Okay, so you're going to be picking ideas that are going to mesh with you and that are going to work. So maybe just write down one to three things that you're going to do, depending on what areas you need the most help in. Do you need leads right now? Do you need um, do you need sales right now? Like, what do you need? Like, what's your most important need? You might want to identify that right now by writing it down. Okay. Uh, and then you're going to want to find the ideas that do that. If you are a consultant, looking to move up into leadership between now and to actually go to leadership, then your number one focus is parties and maybe the ideas that go with you doing the idea at the party, right? You don't have time or energy to pivot and do like a big open house. You don't have time, like you, you can't do everything. And so you have to pick your focus, what's important to you. Um, and everyone sells product along the way, which is amazing. So first thing I want to remind you is how quickly the holidays sneak up on people. You might think it's September. It's the end of September. I've got time. We got so much time. You ain't got time. Okay. Because it's going to be no October 1st on Saturday and October is like a blink. Pretty soon it's pink Friday. All of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, it's December. <laughs> right? So the first thing that is important to do. What is your sales goal for October through December? What is your monthly goal? And what is your total goal? Okay, this is something you need to write down. So in your, like, I, I would recommend if you're taking notes tonight to have like a page on the right, that's the to-do list. And then on the left is the note. So on your to-do list is, what is your sales goal? Okay, write it down. Because when you set a number, you're more likely to actually hit it and work towards it. And put a picture of why you're working towards that. Like, why is it important to you? And I challenge you to pick a holiday selling goal that, you know, whatever you're going to do with that money, you need to declare what you're going to do with that money. And it has to be something other than just paying off debt. Because, because you already have it, right? Like, it's not going to motivate you to get out of bed in the morning to sell product as something like, I'm going to take my kids to Wisconsin Dells for a really sweet weekend, you know, sometime this winter, right? That's going to motivate you. And if you do have people in your life, tell them, you know, maybe you don't have kids, but you're with your husband, like, hey, I'm going to, when I sell 10,000 this holiday season, I'm taking us on a weekend to Duluth or Grand Marais or just somewhere, you know, whatever it is for you guys. And tell them about it because I guarantee you, if you tell them about it, then they're like, uh, where are we at with that goal? Huh? Especially if you got kids, they're going to bug you about it forever. Um, <laughs> make it time sensitive, right? Now, I want you to imagine um, what if, like, your husband, we talked about this last year. I thought this was so great. What if your husband opened a Christmas card at Christmas this year and it just had $500 cash in it, like, just because? Because you had it from selling product. Like, what if, right. what if that was a thing, right? Um, or your, you know, kids or whoever. So I'm just muting everybody here. Um, so that's a big important thing too. Schedule the things you like to do and fit the holidays around that. We're going to talk more about that later. So what is your why? Write it down. Put the pictures up. What is your sales goal? Last year, my sales goal was, I think I wanted to retail 18,000 October, November, and December. 
And I think I did like 16,000. So I was really close to that goal. So really writing that number down, breaking it down monthly. Um, strategy, continue to hold parties. Grace Lemke and I were talking about this. She is like number five in the Diamond Seminar every year. She's like top in sales in the whole world, right? <laughs> um, we were having this conversation on the top sales director trip that the reason we sell a lot during the holidays, I just want to make this very clear, okay? The majority of our sales still comes from parties. Like two thirds to three fourths of it is coming from parties and doing some of these ideas that you can do at the parties that are related to holiday selling and not because we're doing all these random ideas, right? So it's just that the holidays allow you to get that in then some selling, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I already talked about that. Get your customer systems up to date now. Like this week, that should be, put it on your to-do list, clean up the customer systems. Okay, so what that means is, how are you gonna contact your customers? There's a lot of ideas, including our team sale, um, you know, holiday pilot or um, holiday test panels. Like you're going to need with these holiday ideas and these flash sales that the company does. How are you going to contact your customers within 10 minutes? Are you able to text them, email them within 10 minutes? Like, is it a fast thing for you or does it take hours and hours on end and you never do it? Okay. So, um, so that is important right now. The other thing is, is um, everyone, you know, making that list of who needs gifts this year for you. How many of you did the challenge from last week when I challenged you to write down the people you give gifts for and then matched it up with the Mary Kay gifts that you could give? Did anyone do that? Okay, that's a reissued challenge then. How exciting. Okay, so you're going to want to do that. The other thing is, is, um, okay, your Christmas list is different than your customer list because your Christmas list is anyone needing a gift, which is different than like your prospect list, your soon to book list. There are people, this is why I love the holidays. There are people that will buy Mary Kay over the holidays that wouldn't any other time of year because they're looking for easy grab and go items that, that are great. So your Christmas list is even bigger than your prospect list or your customer list. Um, everyone you know who needs gifts and gives gifts is on your list this holiday season. We're going to talk in a minute about time management, but I want to just share this. Inventory. We want to talk about inventory really quick. Do you have what you need to show and sell on the spot for the holidays? Um, so I was doing some research on the internet of like, what is the holiday strategy this year? And with inflation and all the things going on, it's this, okay? When money is tight for people, um, customers will always look for a reason to say no to a purchase. When money is tight, customers will always look for a reason to say no to a purchase. So the way that we can increase our sales is making the path to purchasing easier by removing objections and obstacles. Them having to wait for products is an obstacle. How many times have you thought you wanted something, but then you found out you had to wait for it and you're like, eh, I don't need it anyway, right? So having products to show and give, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about some simple ideas for gifts and things like that. Um, yeah, and the other thing, just making sure you have the samples. Do you have a set of the holiday products that you can demo? Um, Diane Cole, my sales director buddy, always does this. She opens an entire roll-up bag with all the fragrances, men's and women's, in the roll-up bag. That's a great plan. If you're going to take that fragrance roll-up bag to your parties, you literally have all of the fragrances open. It's an investment, but it's a great investment. You're going to get a high return on investment doing that because when I take my perfumes and cologne bags to parties or to appointments or, you know, just even have them at Thanksgiving, I sell a lot of fragrance. And fragrance is like a multi-billion dollar industry, specifically around the holidays. I feel like it's an area in our company that we have not maximized. I mean, we were at the bridal fair yesterday, and I think we sold like four 
colognes and perfumes just on this. We didn't like sell them on the spot, but there were people that were like, yes, please contact me to get me this perfume because it's awesome. So, and we don't even know these people, right? I mean, we know they don't have consultants, but like we don't know them, know them. So I think that that's pretty incredible. So opening that roll up bag, and if you're too scared to do all of them, get the roll up bag or or the um the the travel color bag, that clear bag, and put like five or six of them in. Okay. So, but get that order in now so that they come in. You can start showing them at appointment. Okay. So we're gonna talk um a little bit about time and money management. So first off, oops, not that. Here we go. So here you got setting a sales goal, right? So if you consistently sold $400 a week, um, you could turn that into $2,500 profit by Christmas. So you sell 200, your wholesale or 400, your wholesale order is 200. I think the supplies is high. I don't spend $40 on supplies consistently, but it's, you know, you could also put some other expenses in there. Your weekly profits, 160. Um, and just seeing how that accumulates. I'm going to be posting all of these things in our team group so you can look at it, but if you sell 500 a week, that's $3,200 profit. 800 a week, $5,120 profit. $1,000 a week, that's $6,400 in profit. So that's exciting. Um, so I'll be posting that. And then I'll also post this. This is a great way to track your holiday selling goal. What are you going to use the cash for? Here's a picture of it. Putting this everywhere, right? Showing, your fan, showing it to your family. What are you going to need to sell um, in order to do that? And then a little plan sheet. This is a great way to find out your magic number. We're going to determine how much you want to profit, set your retail sales goal. Um, if you're able to, if you've been in Mary Kay, you can calculate a per face average. You can set a faces goal based on what you need to sell, um, commit to how many parties, overbook, and, and figure out how many leads you need. Okay. I know I'm kind of going through things quickly, but we have a lot of stuff to cover. So I'm going to kind of go a little faster. So again, expanding your list. Who needs gifts? If you gift to these people, then others will need gifts to these people too. So it's like bus drivers, hair people, mail carriers, people who helped you this past year, employees, cousins, grandparents, coaches, therapists, all these things, just to kind of get you thinking um, about that. So lots to think about, right? So plan, maybe just take the next day or two when you have Mary Kay time and make a little bit of a plan. Um, and then the planning's done. You're not going to spend any more time planning. I swear, you know, some people spend weeks and weeks planning, but they never execute anything. We need to execute the plan, not just plan the plan. Okay. So, and not having a plan is in fact a plan. So do you want your plan to be no plan or do you want your plan to be an actual plan that you're going to hit and a target that you can hit? So, um, excuse me. Okay. We are going to watch, um, this is national sales director, Kristen Sharp about um, 15 minutes and she's going to go through just some quick money and time management because the holidays you guys the other thing that trips you guys up is poor time management right we think oh I'm so busy during the holidays if, if you want to be my best friend don't ever say the b word during the holidays right being busy is a choice feeling overwhelmed is a choice like if you plan the things that you want to do um Good time management, right? Women make time for the things that they value. You can do everything and not be stressed. Okay. And that's why I like to start early and we like to think about this. So I'm going to play this video. And if you ladies have questions at all, you can drop them in the comments. Okay. Hopefully you can all hear this. If not, just write it in the chat. Bye, happiness but it does by choices. Thank you, Linda Tupin, right? So we want you to turn to page six in your strategy manual, okay? Because y'all, we are so excited to walk you through this because this, again, is the other important piece that I feel like a lot of people miss during the holiday season, where if they would have taken the time to figure out these numbers, they would have a target to hit, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine what your holiday sales goal will be in order to bring your dream Christmas to life. Now. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to pretend that your dream Christmas is going to cost about $1,250, okay? Now, here's the deal. I encourage you, I'm begging you to research actually what your number is, okay? Because having a legit number to work with makes this exercise even more powerful. So for today's purposes, though, we're going to work through this together. So hypothetically, I want you to say that your goal is to profit $1,250 this holiday season. So go ahead, write that on the line in your packet. Now, 
for those of you, you know your personality style, don't worry, you have access to this file in the Google Drive, so you can print a new one for your true numbers. But we really wanna make sure you understand how to do this, okay? Now also, considering the 60-40 split, which is so important when running a profitable business, you want to make sure that you are doing that 60-40 split in order to reach your profit goal. So let's talk about what your retail sales would need to be with this scenario. So we're gonna take the 1,250 and we're gonna divide it by 0 0.40, okay? So when you take 1,250 and you divide it by 0 0.40, okay, that gives you 3,125. Now, I want you to really, if you can, like bust out your phone calculator, if you're watching on your laptop or if you have access to a calculator, because if you are not a numbers person or a math person, actually physically doing this exercise yourself will help your understanding, okay? So when you take 1,250 and you divide it by 0 0.40, that is 3,125. And I want you to go ahead and write that on your sheet, okay? So 3,125 is what our retail sales would need to be in order to hit that 1,250 in profit, cash in your family's bank account. Okay, now when we talk about the 60-40 split, there's also a part that is our 10%, okay? So if you're a new consultant, let me walk you through what this is, okay? Now, that 10% is for your supplies and packaging, okay? Your section two items like samplers, catalogs, things that don't count towards your star, okay? So we really wanna limit this and that's why we've allocated no more than 10%. Your goal is actually to spend less, okay? The less you spend in this category, the more profit you have for your family. So Leanne and I do not recommend more than 10% of your sales go to supplies and packaging. So. Using our example here, if your sales goal is $3,125, or excuse me, $3,125, you're gonna take that and you're gonna multiply it by 0 0.10, the 10%, okay? And when you do this, that tells you that you should not spend more than $312.50 on supplies and packaging, okay? Okay, isn't this like so helpful? Because you guys, the $312.50, which is your max spending limit, okay, that's gonna cover things like ribbon, gift boxes, holiday catalogs, stickers, tissue paper, um, samples, you get the gist, okay? Now, we're gonna be talking more about what packaging to buy and how to merchandise and wrap later, but just promise us that you do not overspend in this area because Leanne and I, we had a big conversation about this, and truly, this is one of the most common mistakes that we see consultants make. Okay, so let's keep going. If our retail sales goal is 3,125, what this means is you're gonna purchase half of that from Mary Kay in product, okay? In product. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that 3,125, okay? The 3,025 and you're gonna divide it by two. And that's how we got that 1,562.50. Now, cleansing breath in, cleansing breath out. We have little examples on the sheet for you, okay? so. Stay with us, stay with us, okay? But we want you to write this down. So go ahead and write that down. Your section one wholesale order will need to be no less than $1,562.50. So considering also your supplies and packaging, your total investment is $1,875, okay? So did you see where we got that? We added those two numbers together, okay? All right. So here's what's so fun about this is you're going to go back and you're going to plug in your own numbers. Okay. And remember, you can go back and watch this segment multiple times to make sure that your math is correct. And I love this sheet because it's also something that you can walk your future team members through that come in in the month of September to get them off to a great start. Okay. Now, with that being said, we also have sample holiday section one orders in the Google drive. Okay. And we did this because we planned ahead because we want you to already know and estimate what you need for the holiday season. And also you guys, because it, I'm gonna be shocked if these items are still gonna be available in November. And so what Leanne and I have also noticed is that because of the pandemic, many people are selling from an empty wagon, as Mary Kay used to say, and they are relying on the customer delivery service. And if you have never done a Christmas before, let me break the news to you, okay? There is a certain point during the holiday season where Mary Kay cannot guarantee that products get delivered to customers. It's very early in December. Because these holiday products are so amazing, they sell out so fast, okay? So having products on hand to wrap, to show, to test, to merchandise is key to your success, okay? Now, I also wanna say this. 
Some of you are going to do and figure out your math for your holiday strategy. And you're going to think, okay, great. I got this. This is so doable. This is a done deal. I'm going to invest in my inventory. I'm going to get it ready. I'm going to be on it. Okay. And some of you are going to see your retail sales goal number and you might want to throw up in your mouth. Like you might actually start to panic. Okay. This is where we want you to take a cleansing breath in and a cleansing breath out. Okay. Because it's really simple. It's really simple. And I want to walk you through the next page in the manual because I have found that when I show the consistency of selling on this dream big consistency pays off sheet, you guys, I will tell you that all of a sudden people have like this, like sense of peace over this. Okay. So basically this sheet shows you, if you start now, you can sell $400 per week and you will have profited to one by I just went time. over that. So I'm so over it. What I love about this sheet, you guys, is these numbers are completely realistic. And actually many of you are going to far surpass the numbers on this sheet. So dream big. Now, one more thing. Remember, Selling our product is just one way that we make money, right? When you grow and you build your team, you're going to receive love checks deposited into your account from Mary Kay Corporate. And that income is in addition to your sales. So I want you to just imagine if you go on target for your car with a minimum of 5,000 in personal team production, you guys, this could add another $650 or more to your income each month. Okay. You guys, that's another $2,400 or more by Christmas, plus your profit, plus a new car in your driveway. Okay. That's exciting. All right. So keep watching because Leanne's going to be sharing some amazing team building tips to really help this make a reality for you and your family later in the session. Okay. Now, before we go to team building though, I want to bring Leanne back on because one of the top areas I believe that holds people back from moving up and building their team is time management. And y'all, Leanne has this amazing system that she actually taught me with her date book and a brain book. And I am so excited for you to learn directly from her with this system. So Leanne, take it away. I am going to teach you guys my two book system for time management. So I actually run my entire Mary Kay business with two books right here and a cell phone. That's it. Can you imagine? So I want to teach you this today, but before I jump in, I just want to tell you what caused me to develop this system that I use. And so like Kristen said, I feel like a lot of what holds people back is time management. And I used to be a beast at time management. And then what I noticed was just when I would feel like I had mastered it or figured it out, there would be some sort of change either in my family life and my business life in the world, hello pandemic, where maybe my system wasn't working for me so much. And I would always try to figure out how to make a square peg fit into a round hole. But what I mean by that is, is I would always hear about time blocking and task management and all these like, you know, well-known systems that work for people, not just in Mary Kay, but all around the world. And they just never worked for me. I did them and I, I did it like 85% well, but I was never in such a groove with those things that it became like brushing my teeth where I didn't even have to think about it. And when I started Mary Kay, I didn't have any children and I worked about 80 hours a week and was in graduate school. I then got married and was a newlywed and a new director working Mary Kay full time. Then I had babies and I went through that like diapers and you have a runny nose every day phase. And now the season of life that I am in, I have two very active little boys. They go to, well, one's not little, one's a teenager and breaks my heart. But um, one plays baseball and football simultaneously. And my son is a competitive hockey player to where he is even on like an athlete schedule at school because they exempt him from classes because He's on the ice. So it's like very high level athletics. And, you know, I could always think in any of those phases of my life, I could have made the excuse of, well, if I didn't have a full time job, I could get more done. So once I quit my job, I'll be able to do more. Well, that didn't happen. It was just I, my job wasn't filling up my time, but, but something else would. And then I remember thinking, gosh, you know, it must be so easy for those people that have kids because they're out and about all the time. So they're meeting people and I'm not meeting people. Well, then I had babies and I thought, oh, my gosh, if I didn't have like nap time and, you know, once they're in school, I'll really be able to run for my Mary Kay business. And you guys, for those of you that are seasoned moms, it's just different phases of life, but the same distractions and the same habits and behaviors that I talked about in my last training are still there. And so I thought, you know what, Leanne, you have a choice. I can say 
you don't understand. We're on the ice every night. We travel all the time. I got I have like five hours a day where my kids are in school. And, you know, I, I could have made all these excuses and I could have thought, well, I'm just in a season. And in this season, it's not my time to go full force with my business. And I always think of the story from national sales director, Lily Gotro. And Lily, I, if by chance you ever hear this, I want to thank you so much for sharing this story because it is like ingrained in my brain and I think of it all the time. And Lily talks about when she was on the road to national and she had small children and she said she never wanted to look at her son in the eye and say, because of you, I didn't do it. And so that for me is one of my habits and behaviors that I, one of the things that drove my habits and behaviors is I never want to look at my son and say, because of your hockey and because of your drive and your commitment and what's important to you, I couldn't do it. So I knew that I had to find a different way to work. I also, I work my business 100% virtually. I know that some are all in person and some do a hybrid. I am 100% online. And so my traditional ways that I used to manage my time were no longer working. So I had to create something where I could be on the go because my schedule changed from day to day. And even days when I thought I had it perfectly designed and figured out, we could get a call like, hey, there's no practice tonight, but we're calling practice tonight. Or it could be that my other son got a football game that got rained out, that got rescheduled on a day when my husband was getting handle hockey, and now all of a sudden I have to take my son out of town. It's very fluid right now in our house. And so the first thing I did was I created my brain book. My brain book is just a binder. It's just a binder, you guys. And inside of the binder, I have a whole bunch of tabs. And throughout the Holiday Hangouts training, I am going to show you different ways that you can use this binder. So, for example, what you will find at the beginning of my binder is I have my tracking sheets. So I am tracking my cord of sales, my cord of sharing. Like, are you tracking your start? Where are you tracking your goal? And I keep mine in here because I used to hang it on the refrigerator, but I'm not really ever in front of the refrigerator much to look at it. And so this is where I go. I have all of my tracking sheets in here, everything I need for that. The next thing I have in here is my daily success tracker, which we're actually gonna teach to you in an upcoming training. But this is how I keep track of the, of the activities that I need to do every single day to lead, generate, make sure I'm booking parties, all of those things. So you're gonna learn that down the road. Another section I have in here is my team building tracker. Stay tuned, I'm gonna teach you that today. You're gonna to get this in just a second. I also have my holiday hangout strategy manual in here. It's where I keep all of my trainings and things I need. I also have just a section with loose leaf paper so that I can write a to-do list. I can take notes if I'm in a training. Like I have everything here all in one place. So I encourage you to get a three ring binder, throw a bunch of dividers in there and start thinking about having your business all in one place. The next thing that I have is my date book. And I actually recreated a month and a week of my date book in the strategy man strategy manual. That page that you see in there that shows my date book, that was my legit date book for a month this past year, okay? So I wanna tell you a little bit of what is on there. So I work on a date book that has a month at a glance and a week at a glance. And so what I mean by that is the month at a glance, like this is an entire month right here. I can see a month on two sheets of paper. And then when you flip to the weekly pages, it just has the week, Sunday through Saturday. Here's how I use it. On my monthly pages, I put all the things that we have to do. So I'm just gonna highlight a couple. Okay, so every Tuesday at noon, I have my unit meeting. That's on there, pink huddle, 12 p.m. Um, you can see where I have like Sarah, 12 p.m. That was an appointment. That was a facial that I had booked, an online facial that I was doing. You'll see max game, 9.30 p.m., max games, 2.05 and 9.05, and then it says Tampa. So I know when he plays, but I also know I'm out of town during that time. I have RJ football game at 7, RJ baseball practice at 6.30. Those days are real fun. <laughs> I also, you'll see where I have Max Games, Orlando blocked off for four days. So I know that's a four day period where I am going to be at a tournament, which is different than games. I even have um, the Penn State, Ohio State football game because we are, I don't know if you have any, if there's any Penn Staters watching me, but that is like, that is protected time in a Penn State house. But that's also something we get to do together as a family. We also have dolphin season tickets. And so I try as much as possible to be home on NFL football Sundays for dolphin games because that's something that my husband and I 
really enjoy doing together. So when you look at my month at a glance, it's basically our family calendar and my work calendar. So it's not only the kids' activities or like open house at school or you know my personal appointments, it's also that protected family time of things that we like to do by watching the sporting events together or maybe there's a neighborhood party. It's all in one place. A lot of times I get asked, do you have separate calendars? Heck no, how would I be able to know what I'm doing for work versus what I'm doing for the kids? I would just be carrying around calendars everywhere. So on that month at a glance page, I write down every single appointment and event that happens for the month. Now, here's what makes this so much fun. My week at a glance pages become my to-do list. So every single Sunday night, I sit down because I'm the boss on Sunday nights and on Sunday nights only. Sunday night Leanne tells rest of the week Leanne what she needs to do as an employee. So I will sit down on Sunday night and I'm gonna talk about my Sunday night routine. My Sunday night routine is my sanity. My Sunday night routine is what sets me up for success the rest of the week. And I hope that you put this on your within one week to do is to get a really solid Sunday routine. So the first thing I do on Sunday evening is Sunday night Leanne sits down and looks at that whole week. And she's looking at, okay, we have baseball this day, we have open house this day, we have an orthodontist appointment this day, uh, you have a skincare class this day, you have a coaching call with a consultant this day, you need to follow up with these, these customers for their two month reorder on this day. I'm kind of getting a high level overview of what needs to happen this week. I even take it so far as to think, okay, Tuesday, we've got baseball, football, hockey, and an orthodontist appointment all on one day. That is not the day so you're making homemade spaghetti sauce for dinner, okay? That's the day that you like take something out of the freezer the night before and you're gonna like throw it in the air fryer. I also have like emergency meals on hand. Like we do the chicken nuggets and french fries too. Like what are those things when my day goes to crap if we need to eat that we can throw in the thing and eat really quickly? So I make myself a to-do list on these pages for every day that week. And I also, like this was a legit week that I put in this manual for you. So for example, I have, um, if we look at, at my Monday that is in here in the manual, you will see everything from, I needed to make a dentist appointment for the kids. Like every six months they need to go to the dentist. I don't wanna forget because I don't want their teeth to fall out. So six months ago, Leanne had written this week, Leanne, a note that says, this is the day you need to make the dentist appointment, okay? I also had gotten some phone calls over the weekend from customers that I needed to call back. So it'll say, call Shirley back. That was something I needed to do on Monday. I also needed to book two parties because I was looking at the number of bookings that I had for the month and I didn't like the number that was there. So I needed to book two parties on Monday. You will also see, I needed to order a new thermostat. Our air conditioner broke that week, not good. <laughs> I, um, in terms of my health, like I, I suffer from paralyzing anxiety. So I say that because I know that there's probably some of you out there that struggle with that too. And so I literally schedule in here, like I know like you're gonna have to walk 30 minutes today. Like I know the things that I need to do to take care of myself. Maybe you've joined a gym or there's a workout class that you take, like put that in there. I will write my meals out for the week. And if you wanna see how I meal plan, I've actually got this really awesome, I call it my no whining, no fuss, no complaining meal plan system that helps me like in just a matter of minutes figure out how I'm feeding these people every week. It's on my Instagram, I did a reel about it. But I will write in here like, we're having pot roast this day, we're having chicken nuggets this day, we're having spaghetti this day, we're having fish and chips this day. So I will plan out my meals. The more that you do this, the easier it becomes. When I first started to sit down and look at my week at a glance and try to make this to-do list and piece this together for me all week, it was very overwhelming. And it took me a long time. I, I looked at it like I had all these puzzle pieces of my family stuff, my business stuff, like life stuff, like your air conditioner goes out. There's no way to plan that. Like I have all these pieces of me and I need to fit them together in this perfect puzzle over the course of the week. Now that I've done it so long, I can have this done in a matter of minutes. So just know that as you do it and as you're building that new habit, the more and more that you do it, the more that you're going to get really great at it. So what does my week look like? Because I'm only the boss on Sunday. Here's what my week looks like the rest of the week. <laughs> I'm like this with my date book. So what did Sunday Leanne tell Monday Leanne to do? And that's all I'm looking at. That's all I'm focusing on. So I don't have that whole, oh my gosh, I'm a loser because I need to call these customers back and I forgot to make the dentist appointment and crap. I forgot we got to travel this weekend and I'm out of shampoo and oh my God, I just, the air conditioning went out. So life's so crazy and it got away from me. And so I didn't do anything for my business today. I don't have that because I know that Sunday night Leanne is a really good boss and Sunday night Leanne set out a really good plan. And if 
Monday Leanne just does what Sunday Leanne told her to do that day, it will all work itself out. I hope that that's helpful. Now, I always get asked, do you time block? Like what hours of the day do you work? I don't. That does not work for me anymore because of just, you know, we can, we can design perfect days, but I've never actually lived a perfect day or a perfect week. Like it, just know that it never goes according to plan. But a habit that I implemented that I worked really hard at, that now it's like brushing my teeth, but it wasn't when I started. And this was a really, really hard one to build. Okay. So I wanted to share that because as we're talking about the holidays, okay, I thought that was brilliant. I don't time block either because, I mean, I just find as women, that's almost impossible because there's just things that someone stops over you weren't anticipating. The kids are sick, like whatever it is, it's almost impossible to time block things, right? So um, I loved how she, that's like an even better take on the six most important things to do list because she, she does it all on Sunday for the whole week. I think that's super smart. So I wanted to share that with you because as we go into the holidays, you know, what are the things that are important to you? Now is the time to plan, okay? Like you can even do a three month plan. You know, when do you eat Thanksgiving with people? Do you go Black Friday shopping? Do you bake cookies with your kids? Do you like, like, you know, book club, like what are the things that are important to you? Put them in your date book now, because if you schedule them, then when you're making those weekly plans, you can plan your selling activities around those things. But it's like you get to do everything and you get to feel really good about it. You can say, I'm doing the things that are fun for me during the holidays, but I'm also really working and hustling hard and doing my business during the holidays too. So I think time management is the number one reason. And the fact that we don't have an awareness of how quickly the next three months are going to go. If you can master those two things, you're going to be good. And you're going to be on target for court of sales, which I know is a goal that many of you have is to sell at that high level. So, um, okay. So we're going to move on and we're going to be talking about October. Okay. So I have an October sales idea. I have October booking idea and an October lead generating multiple lead generating ideas. So I want to start with this first. Um, we do every, not that, hold on. <laughs> There's Leanne again. Okay. Every October and June, we do a team sale together. So we, I have set the date. We usually do at the end of October, beginning of November. We're going to do at the end of October this year. Um, October 27th is our team sale. Now, if you are new to our team, you do not have to take off work. This isn't a save the date, like take off work thing. It's just like, hey, this is the day we're doing the sale. Now, I do want to share with you that I do an entire meeting training on this sale and how to do it. I make up all the graphics for you. I tell you what to say when. Literally, all you have to do is plug it into your system. And so again, back to the beginning of this training, the reason I said get your customer you know, your customer list in order? Do you have your customers entered on in touch? Um, you know, do you have project broadcast or some way to text them quickly? Do you have um, like them in an email list, whatever, is because we start doing stuff like this and you're not going to have time then. You're going to think you're going to have time. You won't um, because things really start ramping up the next three months. So our this is our mega sale. So again, I'm going to be training more extensively on this, but it's basically a big one day sale that we offer our customers all at the same time. So we get to do it together. And the goal for you is to have a thousand dollar day. And a lot of people do. A lot of people um, also have a $500 day where they sell $500 in one day. And it's super exciting. And it's just, it's a really fun thing. It's one of my favorite things all year. So that is our team sale. Um, October booking idea. All right. I love this one. Booking holiday test panels. You guys can start doing this tonight if you want. <laughs> so this is a way. Um, women like to be a part of test panels. For example, my cabbie lady emailed me in June, okay, for July. She said, oh my gosh, I got to select 10 customers to come and see the new fall line before everything else and like rate it and tell cabbie what we think of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, pick me, pick me. I'm so in because I love cabbie stuff. And she picked me. I went to this night. It was super fun. And I felt special. Okay. So that's, kind of what we're doing here with Mary Kay, like they get to be a part of your holiday test panel, right? They're special. They get to, to they're going to be the ones that help you decide what products to, 
you know, really sell during the holidays and what's exciting. And so I have a, a script um, here. I did post this in Panko Powerhouse today because I talked about it on the hotline, but I will post it in our team group um, and send you an email with all this stuff tomorrow too. But it's just like, hey, I got my new holiday products in. I need some face models to give feedback on the new lip colors um, and try some of the new holiday trends. You can do that, um, that fall palette. That's beautiful. The sunrise palette. That's what I call it. <laughs> um, and get together with them. Thought I'd ask you because I know you love, you know, lipsticks in general or whatever the products are that you want to that you want to do. Um, any chance you could be my face model in exchange for a ten dollar gift card? How many of you have ever asked? Raise your hand if you have ever asked your customers to be a face model. Like you've actually used the word face and model. Okay, Kate has. Everyone's off camera. <laughs> okay, so Katie has two. Um, and then now you guys, people love to be models for stuff. Okay. So just the, the languaging is important. Um, so the face model thing is key. Uh, so this is a way, I mean, honestly, if you have a chicken list of friends, this is like a chicken list kind of thing, right? Your chicken list. Have you ever asked your chicken list to be a model for you? They're going to feel really special. First of all, second of all, you're hashing out your chicken list. Um, maybe there's friends in your life that, you know, sometimes we're, we're, so close to someone that we're scared to ask them to do something like this. Uh -huh. Misty looked at me. <laughs> so I know she's got people. Um, this is a great idea for those people too. But I think, you know, in addition to all the other lead generating ideas and bridal fairs and blah, 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 I really think you can fill your date book if you really intentionally ask some great people this script. Okay. And then of course, following up is key. So um, holiday test panels and wording, using that languaging, using face model, using test panel. People like to give their opinion. Just, I mean, like, that's why we have book clubs. So we can just like gossip and drink wine the whole time, right? <laughs> Women love to give their opinion. Okay. So um, speaking of leads, you guys, October is a huge lead generating month. And the reason why is because October is also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's a Halloween, right? There's a lot of different kind of things going on where we're out and about with people. So I have these. Um, one of the things you might want to throw in your month end September orders are these breast cancer self-exam cards that you can get on InTouch. They're through the Mary Kay Foundation. So it just, um, there. it's actually like a waterproof paper. So people can like take this tab and they can hang it in their shower to remind them to do their exam. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, because I'm, I get asked this every year. Okay. So if you're someone who has a hard time finding things, you're going to want to watch this. Um, so where to find these cards, you, you go into, you know, how you order products. It's on the section two tab under Mary Kay culture. And then you click on the Mary Kay foundation and then, oh, okay. It timed out, but you get, it's $7 for a bunch of these cards. So it's not a bad price, which is awesome. So um, I like to stock up on these because when I'm doing restaurant events or I'm honoring working women, I don't give everyone one, but I have them. Um, and so I'll do my usual thing. And then I'll say, oh, and if you want, I have these great, um, you know, shower cards. If you'd like to take one for you or someone, you know, just reminding people to do their exam and not everyone takes one, but I have them available. And you know what? I have a ton of these left from last year. It's great. They last forever. So <laughs> it's not like the exam changes all that much. So it's really great. So you can stock up on some of these in your month end order here. And what I do with these is, um, and I'm not going to go into these ideas extensively because there are videos on emilyshooty.com on how to do a restaurant event, how to honor working women, but it's just with a twist for October. So I'm just going to share this really quickly. And like I said, you're going to get these things in an email for me. So you can do, for example, honoring working women for breast cancer awareness. So your flowers might be pink. You're going to have the shower cards. And basically the only difference is when you go into the places and I'll show you my setup here. Um, I just used, I've used this bag forever. It's just a paper gift bag and it has just some fun stickers on it. And I have my wooden roses and I like to use pink ones for October. And I have, um, I have drying slips and I have pens and I have candy, like candy that women like, you know, like Werther's or York peppermint patties or something. And I just walk in to businesses and I say, oh my gosh, we're honoring working women for breast cancer awareness month. So you get a pink flower. So it's literally the same idea we always do where we honor working women, but 
Um, you know, and, and here's what's cool about it, you guys. You raise, you raise awareness, but also a lot of people ask about the Mary Kay Foundation. And so while they're filling out their drawing slip, because, you know, after I say this for you or honoring working women for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I say I'm also doing a drawing for women in this business area. We're giving away some, um, you know, charcoal mask treatments, makeovers, gift cards, whatever you want to say. Um, while they're filling out their slip, I just say, oh my gosh, or, you know, they usually ask about it. And I say, oh yeah, you know, Mary Kay Foundation benefits research for cancers that affect women and domestic violence. And so we like to do fun things like this. I also have some shower cards. If, if anyone's interested, if you want to grab one for you or someone you know, um, that reminds you to do your exam and it's like fun waterproof paper. And they think this is so cool. And it brings up a lot of conversations about the foundation. So um, honoring working women with a twist. Same thing goes for restaurant events. Okay, I love October restaurant promotions. I know we didn't have huge success with this last year, but we were also just coming out of the pandemic. Like, I feel like we're another year out now. I think things are going to be kind of more back to where we were, you know, pre COVID as far as like people being out and about. But it's the same thing we always do for restaurant promotions. Um, you know, you call the restaurant ahead of time and you guys, I have all the scripts and stuff and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. So and it's all on our website, too. Um, but basically, I just, the, the thing that's a little unique about this is I remember one year I did caribou coffee every morning of the week. So if you work a full-time job, you could go in before work really early when people are getting coffee. A lot of people do drive through now. So maybe pick like a bagel shop or just somewhere in the morning could be an option for you. And you hand out the flowers. It's kind of like honoring working women inside, but I say, oh my gosh, I have a flower for you. Compliments of, you know, Einstein bagels and Mary Kay. Um, we're doing a fun thing for breast cancer awareness. You get a pink flower. We're doing the drawing. And then again, you have some shower cards sitting there that, oh my gosh, if you want to take a shower card for you or someone you know. Um, but you could do it before work. You could do it during over lunches. You could do happy hour stuff. You could do restaurant at night. So if you need leads, okay, look me in the eyes right now. If you need leads, thank you, Anel. Um, October is it. Never fails every year. I, I go through all these ideas. It's November 10th. And someone's like, I need leads. I'm like, girl, where the heck were you in October? Like October is the month to get a thousand, hundred million zillion leads. Really build momentum with your parties. October. Saturday. October. <laughs> okay, so... So make a plan. I, I don't think there's anyone on, there is not a single human on this Zoom that has too many leads. So if you're like, does this apply to me? Yes. So pick out one or two of these ideas. What are you going to, what's your October plan? And the, the difference between the restaurant events the rest of the year and in October, I find that in October places, because a lot of, you know, a lot of people like the, you know, having someone come in and doing like a breast cancer specific promotion with pink stuff and the, the shower cards and the foundation, they'll allow you to do it when other times of year they won't. It also is like normally you wouldn't go into a coffee shop in the morning, but it makes sense in October. Like the reason Caribou loved it was they have that Amy's blend. I don't know if they still do that, but um they have like, it's called Amy's Blend and it's, I think it's someone who used to work there who had breast cancer and they do it in honor of her. I mean, most places do something like that. So that's why they were like, yeah, but any other time, no. So, um, and not all caribous. Okay. So again, you got to make a list of multiple restaurants and call. Um, okay. They do still have Amy's Blend. Great. So that's, and I use the same bag for restaurant events that I use for honoring working women. You just, you have it all. So um, that's a lead generating idea. Another thing, Halloween. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? We got Hocus Pocus 2 coming out, big movie. We got looks for that. We have so many fun things. Um, there are also more lead generating ideas. Oops, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you can do little trick or treat bags. Now, my suggestion, this document has like a little trick or treat bag, but um, do you guys remember, you probably have a bunch of them made, how I talked about this treat bag idea. So it just has like a couple treats. And it has, it says the world is better with you in it. And they scan this QR code, which has your, that is linked to your phone number. You're like, how the heck do I get a QR code that is linked to my phone number? 
There is a post in Bosch unit that I can tag you in, but you need to put your, like right now go in the comments and say, Emily, tag me in this post because I'm curious. And these are things that you could hand out at um, trick or treating. Um, but the key to these are you have to say, don't forget to scan the code. And then, you know what I started doing? I started saying, would it be okay if I just shot you a text just in case the code doesn't work and I get their phone number on the spot? Okay, so <laughs> it's a great one too. The other thing that, as like pre pre COVID, I went to one of these and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, how many of you have been to one of these trunk or treat events where like the church basically, like a church for example, clears out the parking lot and all these cars make like a like a path and everyone opens up their trunk and there's different businesses or just people that have like maybe something spooky in one of the trunks and then you know they're giving away something in another trunk. How many of you know what I'm talking about? These are kind of newer things people started doing. And the reason they started doing it was to make trick-or-treating safer. So instead of going to people's houses, you just, you know, it's like sponsored by the church or the school. How awesome would it be to like be there with your car, trunk open, kind of like a mini booth, right? Where you could do a drawing for people walking by. You could hand out goodie bags. Like I would, I would get their name like on a drawing slip versus relying on QR codes. This is more like kind of out and about, but you could do a lead generating slash like fun little display in the back of your car um, so that people could see your products too. Like how fun, yeah, how great would that be? And a lot of places, um, you know, have different people. Yeah, ask whoever it was, whoever is hosting it, if that's cool, if you can do like a fun little drawing for the people that come. So that is another lead generating idea. Um, I think that honoring working women and restaurant events are great. The other thing to start watching for is um, booths, like uh, craft fairs, gift expos. There's oodles of them in October, November, December, oodles and oodles and oodles of them. I have found the best way to kind of get the scoop on these things is to look on Facebook events coming up in your area and start looking in the month of November and call places and be like, hey, you got a Mary Kay person yet? Um, now, go on emilyshooty.com and watch my entire training on booths because some craft fairs, you sit there, like I don't like sitting there more than a few hours um, and some of them are not good. Like not a lot of people come in. So, so kind of, I have more tips on my website on how to find what the good ones are. If you're not sure if one would be good or not, just, you know, run the details by me and I can probably tell you, um, you know, how much to spend and things like that. Also, we're not allowed to sell product at booths. I just want to reiterate that, um, but that is not okay. Okay, we don't sell product there. We don't have like our inventory there and giving it out to people. It is a lead generating thing. And honestly, you guys, I feel, you know, there's other direct sales companies where they sit and sell stuff. And, you know, I've, I've had people come up to my booth and say, oh, it's too bad you can't sell things. And I'm like, you know what though? It's a one-time thing. I would never meet them as a customer. They would not build a relationship with me. I When I book a party with them because they gave me their information, I meet their mom. I meet their sister. I meet all their referrals, all their contacts. Like I meet their, their base, which is really cool. So, um, okay. And then, so that's October lead generating. Um, thanks for putting that, the tag thing. Please tag me in the QR thing. Okay, I'll look through that later. Um, we also have October team building, okay? So remember last spring, we talked about a summer pilot program. Well, guess what, ladies? It is the holiday Mary Kay Try It program. You guys, can't you, can we all just agree that like this is literally the best time of year to like try Mary Kay because put, you know, if it comes down to it, you're getting your own stuff half price. Like that is amazing that you get your own products at a 50% discount for the gift giving season. And so they can get started. They can get plugged in. They can shop from their own store for gifts at 50% off and they can have fun. And then, you know what? It's it, So when I'm talking to people, I'm like, we love this pilot program. I print a couple off. So I have them at my parties. It's a great time to just try it. Get your own gifts 50% off. Make some extra cash. I mean, how cool would it be if you paid cash for the holiday gifts that you need to buy? 
Um, and then just kind of decide after that, like, is this something I like? Do I want to continue with it? Or was that just a one-time thing? If it's a one-time thing for you, you can be my customer again. It gets totally fine. Sometimes people just need to know that it's okay to try it and decide it's not for them. So <laughs> um, that is the holiday um, the holiday recruiting idea. And I'm again, be posting this, but this, is, this isn't this is really an idea. It's just a thing that you print off and bring with you, or you take this picture and you show it at your um, virtual parties, like in your PowerPoint thing. And I also show it at our peak in the pink so that they get the idea. Okay, we have a guest speaker. You might know her from our unit. Her name is Kate Gall. And Kate is going to be sharing an idea with you. This is an easy one to do at your parties. It is holiday wish lists. So um, here's an example of one. There's a million of them out there. You can make your own, but you'll have access to this one. Um, so Kate, um, do take it away, sister. Yes. So um, just a tip, don't make your own. Just use Emily. Yeah. Like, don't recreate the wheel. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> there are a bunch out there. I think I looked at my holiday folder on my computer because I was going to screen share it. Um, but they all say the same exact thing. And so I am going to pull one up here. Um, so it all, this is a holiday wish list that you can use for new customers. Um, can you all see it? Did it pop up? Yep, we can see it, Kate. You're good. Um, you can use this for new customers, current customers, basically anybody that you meet with from now until Christmas, you can use this holiday wish list with them. And so, like I said, there's a couple of different, you know, styles and versions out there, but they all have kind of these same sections. So this is for your customers to list their favorite things, their wish list, their things, products that they love, but maybe they can't, don't have the budget for it that night, things that they would um, want to be given as a gift. And I'll kind of tell my script in a little bit on that. Um, but this is kind of where they put their wish list, things that they want. If there's a space for their information. And then it, I like this one because it also gives them a space to um, write down people that they need to shop for. And then at the bottom, it says who their Santas are. So those are the people that would be buying the gifts for them. So I bring this wish list out now for all of your parties. Um, but there is there is a way to do it, a good way and a wrong way, um, because we still want to make sales at our parties, right? We don't want them to put everything on their wish list and cross their fingers and wait to get in in December. So I always keep a separate envelope or a separate folder in my party bags of my wish list so that I don't accidentally pull it out with all my party stuff. And I go through the party just like normal. I bring my holiday gifts, my temptation basket of all my little gifts. And I definitely talk up the holiday gifting season in my parties so it gets them thinking. And then once you, and this is for in-person parties, I've done it with virtual parties too. But once you close the party, you do a one-on-one -on -one with them you get their order, what they want to purchase that day. That is when you bring out the wish list. You kind of make it like an afterthought, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you this. So for in-person parties, usually when I'm cleaning things up and I go to fill orders out to my car, that is when I bring out this wish list. And I say, I have this really, really fun wish list that I want to give to you guys. Um, so think of any of the products that you would love to get as a gift, like anything that you would love to get wrapped up Mary Kay under the tree. And I'm going to give you this wish list. You can jot down, make your list, but then tell me those people in your life that need a little bit of extra help 
shopping for you. Like we all have those horrible gift givers in our life that just need need a little help. Um, so there is a space on the wish list for them to jot down a couple of different people that can be their Santas that need assistance. So whether it's, and I always give them ideas, whether it's a husband, a, a boyfriend, a mom, a sister, a grandparent, like give them ideas. So they're thinking about all of those people that they get gifts from and have them write down their Santas. And then you collect the wish list, take it with you at the end of the party. Even if you um, have to stay, stick around for a few extra minutes, it is totally worth it because I have done it before where they, they want to work on their list and they will text me a picture of it later. You never, you never get it back. So take a few extra minutes and wait there for them to jot down a few products. And I have had people that will text me products to add on to their wish list. That's okay. But just make sure that you get that wish list before you leave them so that you have those two to three contacts to reach out to. Um, with customer, I have, I have emailed this out, did called and given them the wish list to fill out, even if I'm not meeting with them in the holiday season. And I give them a deadline to return it to me, either text or email by like end of November, December 1st. And all of the wish lists that I get back, then I um, put them in a drawing to get a free extra gift from me. So, and I wrap it up really cute and nice. And it's just kind of a bonus gift and an incentive for them to get their wish list back to me. So that's kind of a way to get them from parties, get them from current customers. I have done this with virtual too. Again, wait until after the party, after you collect the sale, before you send them the wish list. And again, with virtual customers, I kind of have that incentive to that. Get it back to me within, you know, 48 hours. I, I wouldn't go a week because they're not going to remember anyways. Give them a deadline to get it back to you, to go into a drawing to get an extra Christmas gift from you. Um, and then, so now once you have all of these wish lists, and like I said, you start collecting them now, then mid-November to beginning of December, like usually December 1st is when I start contacting them. Like if it's a husband, I wait till December because they're not thinking about it before then anyways. But if it's a mom or a sister on their list, I am reaching out to them before Black Friday because that is when Christmas shopping really, and even earlier now, um, I mean, I would say by mid-November, if you've got the list, start reaching out to their Santas because the earlier you can get gifts into their Santa's hands, um, the better it is. And I've had it where the Santa then I connect with and you can even, if it's a mom or a sister or anybody um, that I haven't met before, I've gotten them additional gifts, not just my customers, like, so let's say it's my customer's sister. I have helped that sister buy other gifts, not just the gifts for my customer too. So yeah, that is kind of all I got. I think I covered it all. So way to go, Kate. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Who's excited about wish lists? Yeah, Kate, can you email that one to me? I don't know. It's probably on my computer somewhere, but I like that one better than the one I had. So we'll get we'll get that in your hands. Like I said, you're going to be getting an email tomorrow with all the things that I'm talking about tonight. So if you're like, oh, I want that or I want that, I'm going to get it to you. Hey, um, so in the, hey, Emily and um, Kate, is the in that email, is it going to have like the scripts like when you call their Santa? Because like, how do you, you can get that? Yes, you will. Yep. Okay. I will All get right. that from Kate. Will you send me your script for that? Okay, awesome. Thanks, Amanda. And thanks, Kate. Um, okay, so wish list. Kate talked about something in her wish list scene. She talked about her holiday temptation basket. 
otherwise known as your holiday baby. Okay, and so your bait, we call it the holiday baby because, it, uh oh, I'm losing my elf here. The holiday baby goes with you everywhere you go and the holiday baby has things for people to sample. It might have some perfumes, it might have the new product, it might have the new body oil that people could put a little bit on the inside of their wrist. I didn't, I don't have mine together yet, but I do have some of the items. I love this oil, you guys. Look at this. The bottle's already that much down. I've been using it so much. Love it so hard. Um, also, as we get closer to Christmas, your baby might have ready-made gifts that you can give to people. So this has the mint bliss in the sock in it, um, but it is your temptation basket. You might have little papers with like what's in the fragrances. Um, for parties, I would fill this full of fragrances. Um, the holiday line, this is where you can put your holiday line demo stuff that we were talking about. Um, and you set it close to your party so that they can see, oh my gosh, she has cute gift ideas, like the little mint bliss, like little snowmen or, you know, whatever things that you have, this is the men's um, body wash set and you let them like play with it. It's also a thing that you can take with you to like, if you're working at a coffee shop and people will stop and ask you about it, you can tell them about it and you can book people that way. It's just something that goes with you everywhere you go, goes to Thanksgiving with you. Um, it goes to Christmas with you or not Christmas, but just any time you're out and about, you're going to take this thing with you. It's your temptation basket because they get, they can, and you can even have applicators in here. They can sample stuff right out of it. It's kind of like your on the go show that you're going to take with you. It can be a basket. Um, you probably saw when we were watching the video with Leanne, she had like a canvas tote with her name on it. A lot of people use something like that. Um, I know Trisha, I think from our team used a, like a clear little like Rubbermaid tub. You guys, it does not have to be fancy. Um, it does not have to be fancy, right? So I have this quick, funny little video. I know I made this last year for the holiday baby. Um, so I'll just show you this because, you know, it's kind of funny. And it's like two minutes. Hi, ladies. It's that time of year again when we talk about holiday temptation baskets, otherwise known as your holiday baby. It should go with you everywhere and have show and tell, feel and smell ideas for the holiday selling season. So I'm making this video to give you ideas on what to do with your baby. So first things first, you should always take your baby on play dates. You never know what other mommies want, might want to look at your baby and then show your baby to their friends too. The other place that's a good place to go is the gym because who knows, someone might want to play with your baby while you're working out or maybe to the movies or to a friend's house so that everyone is entertained. Now, ladies, it's okay to leave your baby in random places. You won't get thrown in prison for that. The other thing is you want to make sure you take your baby to the barbecue. People at barbecues love looking at babies, holding babies and smelling babies. Also, grandma and grandpa might want to see babies virtually. So go ahead and show off your baby on Zoom. Don't forget to feed your baby because babies get hungry. And so bring them to the restaurant with you or to lunch with your best, best girlfriend. I never leave home without my baby. It is always in the car with me when I go to appointments. Now, ladies, it's okay to let your husband watch the baby and show the baby to his friends too. And last but not least, the most important place you should always bring your baby is to every selling appointment and kitchen table nationwide. Ah, uh -huh, my poor husband. <laughs> okay, so here's what's cool, you guys. Kristen Sharp made an example order of what she gets to put in her holiday baby, okay? So you're going to get access to this if you're like, what do I do with it? Or you don't have like demo things to stick in a baby. Here's an example of what to stick in your holiday baby. So that is super fun. So that's a great idea. Again, something you can just incorporate in um, to what you're already doing. So, um, okay, I want to talk a little bit about merchandising. Okay, couple of changes this year. You're gonna notice. Number one, I am not training you on in-person open houses. In fact, I'm gonna be so bold as to steer you away from them. And here's why. You, it happens every year. People spend hours and hours getting ready for it. And like four or five people show up. I have a different idea I will share with you after I'm done with merchandising where you can spend about a fraction, fraction of the time, you're probably going to sell three times more because I did last year and it's super easy to incorporate. Okay. So if you've traditionally done one in the past 
and you love it, keep doing it, but I'm not training on it. In fact, you guys, it's so much work, like sending out invites and then nobody shows up. And so I, I'm just going to recommend holding parties because honestly, you're going to make more cash and doing this um, holiday sip and shop type thing that I'll show you in a second. But I want to talk about merchandising because this is the other change this year. In the past, oops, I need my baby up here. Um, you know, we've done a lot of like, there's a lot of kitsch, I call it kitschy stuff out there. Like this is a kitschy idea. Okay, these cute little mint bliss snowmen. Okay, are they adorable? Yes. But here's the problem, you guys. A gift like this takes 10 minutes to make. And if you sell 10 gifts times 10 minutes, that's 100 minutes. That's a long time that you're making this stuff. And honestly, I don't sell more of these. Okay, so believe it or not, these are the exact same gift. Okay, I sold more of these last year than I sold of these last year. Okay, so I don't know if that means people are moving away from kitschy stuff. I'm not, if you love the snowmen, make the snowmen. Okay, but if you're like arts and crafts, bleh, don't do it. Okay, we're going to keep it really simple with packaging. So um, because it's just, it's just going to make your life easy. So my first recommendation, buy the boxes. Okay, the Mary Kay boxes, buy the boxes. So a set of the boxes looks like this. Look at how adorable this bowl box is. Okay, because these are, I ship stuff in them sometimes. Um, that's the other thing, you guys. It's really hard. Where'd it go? It's hard to ship something like this and have it look cute when it arrives. Because, you know, he's like mashed up in a box and it like crinkles the paper, blah, blah, blah. Um, and no, don't hate on arts and crafts. I don't, but we also want to make money, right? <laughs> so it's just easier. So I love these boxes because they ship well. They hold different sizes of our products. Um, so for example, this box is great for a satin hand set. Um, it's also great. Like I actually currently have a bunch of the holiday products in here. Um, so this is a nice big one. I use a ton. Um, in fact, I have, where I have it here? Yeah, I've got a few in here. Um, these are from last year, you guys. This is the other reason I like the boxes. I don't have to like tear them apart at the end of the year. I just, there were like six, four or five of these I didn't sell last year. So I'm just gonna, these are gonna be the first mint bliss and socks combo that I'm going to take with me. There's a little guy there. Um, so this is the medium box last year. This is the medium box this year. They could go for Valentine's Day. They could go for, I mean, this is like a pink little bow on here. You can use them for different things. And then this guy is adorable. This is great for like mascaras and like an eyeliner and smaller items, maybe a satin lip set. So, and it's, it's just a beautiful box. You literally have to do nothing to this box. So the other tip I'm going to give you so you buy the boxes, step one. And I bought, I think I bought 35 bundles of boxes this year because I run out every year and they run out every year. If you have boxes left over, you guys, nobody who's not a Mary Kay is going to go, I can't believe she gave me this medium-sized box from Mary Kay last year. It's not like boxes go bad. Okay, boxes do not expire. They're, they're great. The other tip I'm going to give you is, this is a great example, stop messing around with ribbon, okay? Certain kinds of ribbon. So. Here's a gift I made last year and I tried to save it for this year and the ribbon looks like crap because it was sitting in a box. Okay, so now I have to like take this bow off because it's kind of like fritzy and weird looking and put a new one on. So if you get really mad at ribbon and bows and things like that, my best advice is to go to amazon.com and buy yourself tool. Okay, so that's what I have around here. Tool doesn't get fritzy if it's like sitting in your holiday baby you can make a cute little bow. So all I did was I bought a thing of this. This year I got really, I went crazy and bought another color. I got gold now. Woo. Um, so you buy a couple colors if you're feeling, you know, adventurous. And then all I did was, um, you know, I, I, there's a bow video, which I'll put in the email that if you're like bow illiterate, it, it's super easy. This is just like a little bow and tool. Like if you're horrible at bows, it doesn't show it. And then I just bought these little like embellishy things at Michael's. So like these little gold stars, they're really cheap. This is like a little gnome. Gnomes were big last year. So I did some gnomes. People love the gnomes. And I just like stuck it on there with a little bit of like, I think it's like a wire. Yeah, just like a little tiny, you know, that little thin wire. Done. Okay. But here's what I'll tell you about gifts. Okay. So 
pick what's easy for you to make. Women want finished gifts. They want finished gifts right now. We're in a DoorDash society, right? People want it. They want it done. They want it now. Remember what I said at the beginning of the workshop? Money, when money is tight, customers will always look for a reason to say no to a purchase. Also, if there's a, an option to purchase between something finished and something not finished, they're going to pick finished. Now, the other thing with merchandising, whatever you spend on the packaging, you need to double it and add that to the cost of the gift. So a satin or a mint bliss, are they 12 now? 11 or 12, doesn't matter, we'll say they're 12. So if they're 12 for the mint bliss and the socks, I might retail this for like 14 to cover all the packaging in the box. Um, so that's important. This, this packaging is really inexpensive though. So I would probably just do 14 for this. Um, it is not a year to sell things and see what happens. She is not lying when Kristen Sharp said shipping deadlines get crazy. CDS is not going to do this for you. The customer delivery service does not wrap things. Um, mailing stuff gets real fun starting mid-November. Keep that in mind with virtual parties too, okay? <laughs> so that's why I'm switching to more in-person because it gets real crazy getting people sample packs. You need like a week and a half to get people sample packs. So kind of keep those deadlines in mind. Um, the other thing is price points I want to talk about. So you, most people only give a very small percentage of gifts to their, like their mom and spouses. And those are typically higher price gifts, but that's a small percentage of your gift giving. The majority of the list, right, are like teachers, coworkers, employer, you know, that list I showed you. They're not gonna, you're not gonna drop 50 bucks on a coworker unless you really like them. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't. So price points, you're gonna sell more if you have a lot of like reasonably priced grab and go already ready gifts versus having a whole bunch of really expensive gifts. Our number one seller for that reason is the mint bliss with the socks. Now, if you were not on the holiday or, or the um, new product preview. Okay, so when you purchase a Mint Bliss right now from Mary Kay, you get a free pair, this free pair of fuzzy socks. Look into my eyes. The socks always sell out, always. Socks don't expire. Okay, so if you get a lot of these, you can continue to sell the Mint Bliss. I have socks banked from past years. So I'm good on socks, which is great. Like I, even if I, even if the company runs out, plus I ordered like a bajillion mint blisses this year because I literally sell so many of that. Um, satin hands is another great price point, but the biggest, so there's price points. You want to have gifts between $12 and $15, between $15 and $25, and then between $25 and $50. But I would say the majority of your gifts should be between like $15 and like $25 in, in there somewhere. Um, the hand cream, that's a popular one too. People will buy like a little mug at the dollar store. You wrap the socks around it. There's a video on in touch on how to do that. And you stick the socks in the mint bliss in a coffee mug done, right? You could also do that in the box, <laughs> a big believer in boxes. Now, if you do want to have some additional items, I have some examples. Um, you can get, um, so I had some of these washcloths left that Mary Kay had. So I did some gifts like this. I have these are called gable boxes, G-A-B-L-E. Again, doing the tool, houndstooth was really popular last year. This has the, um, the, the hand soap. The hand soap is really a great gift. A good price point, so you could put a hand soap and you know you want to get a, a hand cream in there too, great. But if you just want to get a hand soap, what a great stocking stuffer or like a secret Santa at a workplace kind of gift. Our satin hand shea soap is a big gift idea. Um, the place that I get these gable boxes is called Peter's Packaging, peterspackaging.com, or um, you can probably find some on Amazon too. But again, like if you're like, eh, I want to have to shop for that stuff, these boxes are fine too. Um, so I'll just kind of show you. The other thing you want to do with this is when you merchandise stuff, you want to show it off. So these were some pictures. I sold out of this Mary box with the Buffalo check ribbon. I sold a ton of these. 
Um, and I only had so many. So it was like, oh crap, I wish I would have gotten a lot more of those. This was my most popular thing. And it just had the mint bliss with the socks or the hand cream and a lip balm in it. That was it. Um, here again, that same gift from last year, but take like pictures like this. This is a satin hands box. So this just had satin hands with a bow on it. That's it. We're not like making the satin hands into like elves or Grinches. It's literally satin hands in a box. <laughs> Who likes simple? Raise your hands. Where are my people at? Where are they? Okay, good. So um, if you want to get a little more fancy, you can get some different size boxes. But honestly, the Mary Kay boxes are going to hold that. Um, and when people buy Mint Bliss from me, I say, do you want it wrapped or unwrapped? And sometimes they want it unwrapped because they're going to throw it in something. So I always ask because then I can save my wrapped ones for the people who want the wrapped ones. So that's that. Okay, we got two ideas left. And then we're done. This is why, like, this is only taking us through mid-November, okay? Just know that there's going to be another holiday workshop like end of October that we're going to cover Pink Friday. We're going to cover sales to men in December. We don't need to talk about that just quite yet. Um, so that's why I wanted to do that. Um, before we interview Becky, oh my gosh, Becky, you're on deck, girl. Um, so Becky's going to talk to us about selling to businesses, but I want to share with you my replacement for a holiday open house. I tried this myself last year, so I know that it is a proven method, <laughs> okay? Last year I was like, okay, I watched all of you like toiling over your open house. And I even talked to some consultants who've done open houses several years in a row and they're like, I'm kind of done with it, okay? So that's why I'm kind of like steering you away out of that direction because it's just such a time consuming thing. And you have to clean your house, who wants to do that? So what I did last year, is um, when we did our team sale. So we did this team sale, our mega sale last year, and it might be the same as this. It might be different than this, whatever. I made a front and back page flyer. This was the front of the flyer. So it had the sale. It had on my website. It had, um, you know, just me trying to recruit people over here. <laughs> okay. So this was the front of the flyer. And then I did this on the back just to see what would happen. Um, I told them, okay, I just I just called it a virtual gift giving grab and go session. Okay, another way you could word it is holiday sip and shop. I don't really care, call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. And so on the back, I said, get a 40% off any item or set coupon. So they get this coupon just for attending the virtual gift giving grab and go session. Now, the key to the coupon, the coupon is only good after Christmas, like between Christmas and New Year's, basically. And there are a lot of people that did not use their coupon. OK, um, but a lot of people did. But the people who did were also the ones who got on this, you know, like were really buying on the session. So all I did, you guys, I literally thought this up, implemented it and took spent maybe a half hour on it. It, it was crazy. It was awesome. So it's a 30 minute Zoom where I quickly show you the gifts at different price points. Because again, that, that interests people. Like, oh yeah, I want to see different price points for everyone on your list. Gifts from $10 and up with my expert packaging and wrapping. Here's my three dates. Um, they RSVP'd for the Zoom link. I did not follow up hard on this because I'm like, I don't know if this is even going to work, right? So I was a little lackadaisical about it. So I, this year, I'm really going to hit it hard and really follow up because it worked, you guys. So I did a few of these sessions. This is how crude it was. I literally just like made an outline of like, okay, here's like 10 to $20 stuff, 20, 30. And all I did was get online and say, okay, so first gift I'm going to show you is this. This is, I don't even honestly know what's in here. I should probably look, huh? What's in here? Oh, a charcoal mask and a mask brush. And you get the towel. Um, this retails for blah, blah, blah. Um, and I actually um, had a like a like a little list. I emailed them ahead of time, like a little shopping cart like checklist so that they could write things out. Um, so and, and I would just, okay, here's our most popular holiday gift. This is the one that people get multiples of for all of those like where you kind of need a cheaper gift. I also talk about how people need to have a couple extra gifts laying around their house. For that person you forgot to get a gift for that shows up at your house and you go, oh crap, I need a gift for fill in the blank. Maybe it's for a school function. Maybe it's a church thing. You forgot the gift. This is that gift. It is mint, our mint bliss lotion and socks. And so I just talked about each thing. Um, 
I sold between all three of them. I sold, it was somewhere between like $1,200 and $1,500. I spent like no time. On it. So this year I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend a little time like kind of perfecting this, but it's, it's kind of like a virtual open house, but it's just quick. You guys, you got to keep it quick, like 20 to 30 minutes on zoom or you're going to lose them. Right? So that's what I'm going to recommend as a replacement for a holiday open house, because you know, instead of cleaning your house and sitting there, you're going to sell probably the same amount, but it's all about offering that coupon with your sale. I would start offering that coupon. You could even, you guys, you could offer that coupon at your parties, right? Like have a one page sheet and just say, oh my gosh, if you attend one of my holidays, you know, virtual stop and shops, you're going to get this coupon to use, but it has to be between Christmas and New Year's because you're going to want sales that week too. And so that's a great way to get sales and move some of your inventory that week. Okay. The last idea that we have for tonight is uh, I'm going to interview the fabulous Becky Bettinger. Um, so Becky is our queen of selling to businesses. So just to kind of give you the gist, businesses give gifts to their employees, right? So like your local dry cleaners, give maybe gives their employees a gift maybe you've gotten something as a gift like my husband used to get a turkey woo from his employer right so um so becky is basically just connecting with businesses that need to give gifts and saying my name is becky and i have gifts and <laughs> then selling a lot of product right so um, becky much. becky do you remember how much you sold just from holiday or from businesses last year oh seven to eight hundred dollars yeah yeah just yeah. with like two or three businesses exactly yeah and so becky kind of got the bug last year she's already begun this year haven't you becky mm -hmm. yeah um so becky okay so i i told her it would be interview style so becky tell us um tell the consultants like how do you determine a business to ask like what how do you do that actually i look online businesses restaurants and nail salons or hair salons and this was my list for today 15 of them um businesses restaurants and nail salons and hair salons and every day i'm making 15 to 20 up in the morning and then during quiet time i call them and i just say hey this is becky bettinger i am a mary Kay consultant first i asked to talk to the manager and i'm like if you need any great holiday gift giving ideas for your employees um you know i have several ideas to share with you can i come in one night and show you what i have and i asked them the price point that they're kind of looking into and i have three or four appointments for next week and the week after and yeah I'm taking 15 to 20 a day and just calling and seeing what happens. Okay. Yeah. And I would also recommend, I think like um, insurance places, like you see like a state farm, American family, like they're kind of smaller and they're franchise kind of family owned ish type places yeah. that okay. great dry yeah. cleaners. I mean, places you would honor working women. I think would also be good to ask for this. Now, if you do have a relationship with businesses, for sure, ask those. Like, you know, like your cousin owns a construction right. company or something. So, and franchise restaurants usually don't, they usually have their own things to do. Right. Yeah. No, I meant yeah. like the, yeah, the yeah. insurance places. Yeah, so, exactly. Becky, Becky, tell us like examples of what you take in to show them and how so, do you show them? Mint Bliss has worked out really good with the socks, um, satin hands. Um, this this uh, year, I'm going to do the men's um, gift set um, and then the coffee mugs, dollar coffee mugs from the dollar store with um, eye makeup remover, a mascara, uh, eyeliner, and a, some of the little pads and then some candy in it. Easy, simple. Awesome. So I bring in like three or four different, you know, things. And this year it might be a little bit different because I really haven't brought in gifts for men. And I know already there's people that want to see men's gifts. So I'll even get just a box, like Emily said, or just a little tin and 
stick in a men's face wash, a washcloth and a razor or um, shaving cream in that whole in that whole setup. Yeah, and these would be great for that too. You could even break them apart if they, they need a different price point. You could split it in half, break it apart, stick something in there. Exactly. Um, okay, awesome. Um, yeah. And then, so how do you collect money for that? Do you collect it all up front? Do you do half and half? Like, how do you collect from the businesses you sell to? I usually do half and a half. Okay. So yeah. let's say next week you're going to go in, you do these appointments and they say, yep, I'd like to buy 12 gifts. Like, what do you tell them? Do you write it up right on the spot and charge them on the spot? Like, tell them a little more about how you, you know, them. like, I guess like businesses I haven't dealt with, I'll probably do that. But businesses I have dealt with before in the past, I will make up everything and then bring it in and then I'll have them pay me, um, yeah, it just kind of depends on, you know, just kind of depends. Okay. What, Does anyone whatever. have any questions for Becky about, oh, and Becky, um, so you're starting now. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you're starting now doing it. How long do you keep going with this? Um, usually the first or second week of December. Okay. Like awesome. I, like I always try and make sure that everything's done and delivered by like December 10th. Okay, perfect. And the and people that I've called called to say, hey, you know what? We really appreciate, you know, that you're coming in. This is going to be taking a lot of, you know, holiday stress off me or whatever. Yeah. Do you have any of the ones that you did gifts with last year? Like, are you calling them back to re kind of do it again? Yeah. One restaurant is two restaurants are three years in a row right now. Wow. One's a, one's a coffee shop and one's a restaurant. Yeah. So if you guys are looking to. Oh, that? Ahead, I said, go ahead, Becky. One restaurant last year was for 30 employees. And this year she said they have 45 employees. Yeah. Wow. So here's what's cool, you guys. Yeah, it's a little bit of extra work. But if you're doing what Becky did, where you built this relationship with the, the gal that has 30, now they have 45. Mm -hmm. And you're old reliable about it every year, mm -hmm. every year. That's like an amount that you can chip off your holiday selling goal. That's pretty mm -hmm. much guaranteed. It's going to make your every year holiday selling that much easier to the point where you don't even have to think about it. You just like set the appointment every year and say, oh, I'm back. Exactly. <laughs> and, yeah. Show them that. So one of the things I want to point out, because Becky texted me her script. So I'll be sending you the script. Um, I love what she said. So this is kind of like the word she uses. The holidays will be here sooner than later. And we know, or so, sorry, start over. The holidays will be here sooner than we know. And would you like to be ahead of the game? Um, and she just kind of laughs. And I say, I'm a Mary Kay consultant. And I have many different gift ideas, price points for men and women. Would you like to come in and show you what I have? So I love how she makes it about, um, do you want to get ahead of the game? Do you want to make it easy this year? I'm your girl, right? <laughs> so um, I love that. Who has questions for Becky at all? Misty, oh. go for it. <laughs> so you kind of answered it, but so you don't, you don't bring the gifts to sell on the spot. So when do you deliver them? So like, like if they're ordering, say like 10 sets of satin hands and I have them on in at home, I'll say, okay, is like, I can get them made up within a week or so. And then I'll come back and give and bring them there. And I'll say, okay, do you like if it's something big or small? I usually have them in a box so that nobody, like if employees are standing around or whatever, they can't see what's in the box because I want it to be a surprise. That's a solid tip, Becky. Love it. Hey, Becky, do you, I suppose it depends on if they ask, but. Do you wrap them or put them in the Mary Kay boxes? You do. Okay. I and well, I'm probably going to start doing boxes because last year, and I am crafty, I did a lot of the cellophane, um, the cellophane bags, and then did the pull bow and made it all pretty and fancy. And I may still do that this year, but I may also do some of the boxes as well. I love being crafty. And to me, that's just an extra step that I would like to do for them. 
Yeah, I don't like to be crafty. And just because, <laughs> and I know it's Christmas, so maybe this is, do you like, you know how I put stickers like on my product on the bottle that always says thank you and it has my name. Do you, even though it's a gift, are you still leaving that sticker on there? Well, inside, it's funny. I put my business card. Yeah, you do. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, you could even stick in a like a QR code for like a free pampering session. You could stick. I keep my stickers on because if they want to reorder that yeah, comic book, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just the sticker thing because I'm like I'd have to take all my stickers off. But I thought, well, if it's a Christmas gift, does it look bad if my name is on there? But no, nope. nope, because okay. they, if they want to reorder, they know who to call. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anna, you had a question? Um, we kind of just hit it. I was going to say, do you do anything to try to promote them to be a future customer? And you yes. said you put your business card in, but yeah. Yeah, I think and then good. I'll and then I'll follow up within a month or two, and you know, to the business. Actually, after they order and after I come back within a week, I go back and do up a little nice gift for the person that I dealt with, and then I just you know give that to them on a separate visit, and then within a week or two, I'll go back and just say, hey, you know, or within a month, I'll say, you know, hey, I was wondering how that went over. And if anybody needs to order anything, you know, I'll give them my name and number and my name and number has already been on the products. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a piece that we could expand on as a team. Like you could put like a little something in there with just like a, I mean, it could be even a, just a cute little sheet with a little quick bio about you and your picture. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Hope you enjoy this gift, you know, scan this QR code. If you want to do a QR code or text me, if you'd love to get a complimentary fun pampering session or something like you could totally. That's a great it. idea. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Does anyone, these are all the ideas. Okay. This is taking us through October, beginning of November. Can you believe it? Like it took an hour and a half to get through everything and time management and planning and all that stuff. So does anyone have any quick questions about anything that I talked about that you want to ask before we Actually, go? Actually, guys, start with businesses now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Businesses, October lead stuff, how, you know, test programs. There's a lot of stuff you can do right now. Hey, Emily, I know you said you're going to do the email. So is this going to include what Kate was talking about, what you're talking about, what Becky's talking about? Yep. All the ideas. Yep. And I even have the video of when I interviewed Becky about this last year. So I can throw that in too. So it's going to, I won't get it to you till tomorrow. Well, I need it like yesterday. <laughs> so if you could take it. Uh, tomorrow late afternoon because I got, I got Bridal Lisa working out here. But yeah, I'll get you everything. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything they want to ask? Okay. So before we go, really quick, just unmute popcorn style. What are you excited to implement? What'd you learn? What'd you take away and go? Things are going to change this year from last year. Misty, you got something cooking. I, yeah, know I'm gonna do, I am really excited about the, cause I did not do an open house last year cause it scared the crap out of me to do it. And so I'm going to do the virtual like quick session like you did, hopefully see how that goes. And I'm excited to try the businesses this year too. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to announce this. I don't have it in the calendar yet because I have to sort of, I think we're going to do it early December. So we'll talk more about this at the holiday session part two. I'm going to do one for the team. So it's like a holiday gift, that, what I was just talking about. But if you want to invite your people on that one, cool. But if you want to do your own, it's good too. But like, I have no problems doing one for the whole team. Cool. I did an open house and it... <clears throat> So one thing that I really loved is Kate's um, talking about the Christmas, um, the present, or you know, the Santa things. I'm really excited about getting the email to see how you talk to their Santas. Like that's one huge thing that stuck out to me. I love everything, but Kate, I like that one. Yeah. And you know what's great about that idea too? That week of Thanksgiving can be a little bit of a lull in your business, just like the calm before the pink Friday storm, like that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, 
that's a great time to start calling wish lists too. Or anytime you feel a little bit of a sales lull, you just pull your wish list out and go, oh, we've got sales. They're just sitting here. You just gotta go call them, right? So that's great. Anyone else? I'm excited for businesses. Yeah, Anel, I feel like you could like, I mean, Anel knows like every single person in Stoddard, Wisconsin. I feel like they're all gonna get Mary Kay for Christmas this year. <laughs> I love that. Anything else, Anna? I'm going to be setting up coffee shops. Mm -hmm. Do it, girl. Love it. Well, I was so excited to hang out with you. Thank you for going to 13 minutes over with us. Um, I'm going to be sending this recording, all this stuff tomorrow. But um, let's, you guys, I really think our team can have our biggest holiday selling season yet, but even in a more balanced, easy feeling like, wow, that was fun. I can't believe we sold that much with what we did. You know, like, I just, I really believe that. I love, Becky, I want to thank you so much for training us today and being really the leader. You're like the first person in almost 18 years of being in this business that has really run with a business idea and made it sound way less scary. I mean, the, all the trainings I've ever heard just sounded scary, like send a letter first and do this. You literally just call them and say, hey, let's make it easy this year. Can I show you I'm stuff? I'm not doing a letter. I remember like last year, the year before, the very first year, I think I did it. I ran back to my car because I sold the business $457 worth of stuff. And I think I called Emily. I was like almost in tears. I could not believe it. But yeah. it's exciting, guys. Just run with it. So thank you. You know what? I think that you, really quick though, um, I was really nervous about this one just because like there's so many ideas and then all this run it. You, Emily, Becky, Kate, all three of you have like literally made my entire night and made me Aww. not so stressed out. I'm dead serious. Aww. So you guys did amazing. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Yeah. And Kate, thank you so much too. I want to give a shout out to thank Kate you. for training us yeah. on wish lists and giving us her expert tips. She rocks at that. So um, I'm sure we'll be hearing about it again, but um, yeah. So let's go implement, right? So, and, and I love the time management ideas we got too. So let's get your plan made this week. What are you doing for leads in October? Because everybody needs leads. Um, <laughs> and then what's selling things? And let's do it. It's going to be so fun. All right, ladies, you have a great rest of your night and a successful holiday selling season. I'll see you soon.